And I'd like to ask about the Utah Data Center, which is being built by the National Security Agency in the United States, can reportedly collect 60 billion iPhones worth of data. That's five zettabytes. You know what those are, I don't. It's a lot of data. It's going to go online later this year. How should the US approach that? Uh, reportedly, uh, Thomas Drake is an S NSA whistleblower who says they will collect information on Americans. Should we be concerned about that much data in the hands of the government, given the power of the tools you've been talking about? Eric Schmidt? We've gone through, in the industry, we've gone through a series of these proposals. Um, and they're often um, somewhat overhyped in terms of what they can actually do. Uh, let me suggest what can be done. I don't know if this proposal could be done. And then we can debate whether this is a good idea. Uh, as I understand it, the NSA's job is uh, essentially for foreign communications. They're not allowed to operate in the United States, but I could be wrong there. That's the um, law, but there's a question of whether they're actually following that. No, come on. You can't, you can't ask a theoretical question and then assume that the people are sufficiently incompetent they're not going to follow the law. So I think we have to assume that any activity is legally funded. If it's not illegal, then people should not do it, uh, certainly in America. So assuming that this is a legal activity, um, presumably what they would be doing, and again, I'm speculating, is they'd be assembling some of this information and doing data mining. And the way you would do the data mining is you would look for patterns. Um, so a simple example is that they're looking for people who are racketeering. Well, you know, you'd look for the signals there. And computers are quite good at tracing this. So, I, so far, I've got everybody here in the audience quite, uh, quite upset, right? You're worried about this. You're worried about your civil liberties. Um, on the other hand, there's some evidence that the surveillance world is actually losing because the amount of data that's going on that in fact the amount of communication has so overwhelmed the very legitimate and proper functions of the police and the FBI and so forth that in fact we're less safe as a result. So I'm not going to take a position on the specifics, but I would suggest that when you think about it, think of it in a, in a more nuanced way. Um, our government does need a certain amount of ability to watch, um, again, legally and correctly against the law, you know, again, in a law, in a democracy, in a rule of law country like the United States, and the question is, there's the proliferation of devices has made it very difficult for them to do it. Jared, your response to Cohen, your response to people concerned about their civil liberties with all these tools and tracking? Well, so there, there's a way to talk about this at the government level and then just, you know, uh, for us as individuals, I think, you know, getting nervous about this assumes that different bureaucratic arms of the government are willing and able to work together. Right, so you have different, you know, I, I'm quite serious, you have different agencies that have different authorities to collect different types of data. Um, they're not so good at working together. And so there's a level of sort of competence and cohesion that just isn't there. And this is like in a democracy. So um, what was interesting is Eric and I went to, uh, to Mexico to look at how the Mexican government was dealing with the drug cartels, which of course have killed uh, you know, more than 60,000 people in the last you know, five to six years. Um, we went to see uh, this uh, sort of underground bunker that's called uh, Platform Mexico, uh, where they had unbelievable, I mean, you want to talk about real sort of government, you know, cohesion around data related to their citizens, it was here in Mexico, and this is a, this is a democracy. So we walked out of this thing thinking, you know, you know, we really hope that no autocracy ever gets their hands well, on what they've Well, there, there was more than that, because you can imagine that for legitimate reasons, there's a terrible drug war, a terrible infiltration of the police. You have to build that in Mexico. So let's assume that they get the problems fixed in five or ten years from now. What are the civil liberties protections that the Mexican citizens have? Once those systems are built, they're not turned off. And this, I think, caused us to say, and we indeed say this in the book, that you need to fight for your privacy or you're going to lose it. Uh, we were in Britain last week. There was a terrible terrorist act. One soldier was killed by one uh, apparently lone Muslim extremist uh, in the entire country. And the whole country is excited about this. It's obviously a terrible thing. One person's dead. The Home Secretary calls for broad regulation and surveillance of the internet. Right? Not a good thing. So it's easy for governments to overreact and take away your privacy, your security, and so forth in the name of the security. We would say that an, the open principles, right, the, inter the, the way in which we work today, is a much, much better way you'll be ultimately safer with our approach. There's a proposal in California, uh, it's the right to know uh, measure, uh, that would allow citizens in California to request data from organizations so they could know what companies know about them. And that's similar to what exists in Europe, uh, but the 
Silicon Valley technology industry has opposed that. Can you tell us about your position on the right to know from consumers how much uh, information companies have about them? Uh, I don't know the specific legislation, so I couldn't comment on it. And, and, it was um, quite broad, and it was, yeah. So, so in general, Google answers this by agreeing with the principle. So you can, for example, in Google, there's a, a panel that you can get to where not only will it show Google what Google knows about you, but you can delete it. Um, and that, I think, is the correct standard. Uh, the general view we have is the information that we collect through our normal course of business with you um, is really for you to control. And uh, there are some laws that cover that. So for example, we can't just delete all your searches, although we will allow you to do it yourself manually. Um, but generally, we keep your search history for 12 to 18 months. And that's largely governed by some other laws. And then we anonymize and get rid of it. Let's quickly ask the audience, how many of you knew that you could delete, you could find out, and then delete information Google knows about you? How many people? Maybe a third of the audience. A lot of people don't seem hey, to know. Hey, look, one third is pretty half, good. Half, half, half yeah? the audience. Okay. No, I think it was a third. I was rounding up. <laughs> but that's not the way to do it. It's a third, right? So two thirds have now been educated by the one thirds.